Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking about speed cranking. This method of crankbait fishing is one of the best ways that you can target bass in the fall and winter. Crankbait fishing is an amazing way to catch bass. Most bass anglers are fairly proficient at throwing a crankbait, but speed cranking takes it to a whole different level. We first started covering this technique when we designed our tactical DD75 crankbait specifically for speed cranking. But that's not the only bait that can do this. There are a handful of baits. In fact, today we're talking about both deep divers and shallow running baits. Different ways that you can apply speed cranking. If you're not familiar with what that is, it's essentially burning crankbaits with a stop and go retrieve to trigger a feed response in a bass in ways you have never seen before. And it works in cold water. I'm talking cold water. I don't care if you live in the north. As long as your water hasn't frozen hard yet, this technique works. I have personally caught them all the way down to 37 degree water temperatures, burning a crankbait on an eight to one reel. It works. It triggers a feed response completely separate of every other bait category. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to do it and show you some of the baits that we use. This is where we first pulled out that phrase, burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause. You guys have heard that in so many videos over the last few years after we started talking about speed cranking. Because keep in mind, this is one of those things Tim and I kept to ourselves for a while. We've been speed cranking for a long time. Now, some of you have for a few years too, and you know, but some of you guys, this is brand new for you. So the concept of speed cranking is taking a crankbait, running it at such a fast rate of speed that you trigger a core response in a bass. As it turns out, a bass, regardless of water temperature, hot water, cold water, those fish have this innate desire an innate response to chase. We see that, you know, maybe you're fishing a jig, can't get a bite, then you're burning your jig back to the boat and all of a sudden, bum bum, something touches it. Bass have this response where if a prey species, food, takes off running from them, they react to it. They want to chase, it's built into them. It has nothing to do with their actual desire to feed. In other words, when you're throwing a worm, when you're throwing a jig, a lot of different techniques, slow crawling a big swim bait, you're relying on a fish to want to bite. In other words, you put your bait on the bottom, the fish swims over, they see your worm, they're staring at it, and then they either eat it or they don't. It either looks appealing or it doesn't. That is one way to bass fish. Show fish a bait that they want to eat and then they eat it, simple enough. But there's this whole other thing that does not require a fish to want to eat at all. This category includes speed cranking, Alabama rigs, jerk baits. There are a handful of bait categories that trigger a true feed response. Speed cranking takes it to a level unlike any other bait. So what we're doing with these baits is running them past fish so fast that those fish just on a sheer instinct begin to pursue that bait. They turn and they run after it. Then we stop. So burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause. Those fish are charging so fast to catch up to that bait that when the bait stops, it's right in their face. They almost can't help but run it over. The bites that you can get speed cranking are harder and more aggressive than literally any other bite that you can get in cold water. I'm talking, I've had water in the low 40s where I'm pulling fish. Normally we would be drop shotting or slow dragging a football jig or crawling a swim bait because these fish won't move. 
I mean, you gotta be right in front of them, stalling a jerk bait out on a 10 second pause so that they'll rise to it. And then we pick up a speed crank and we're going as fast as we can on an eight to one reel. And I've got these fish coming all the way to the boat and I'm physically seeing them with my eyes and then doing a figure eight and getting these fish to eat that thing in December and January when they shouldn't react at all. That's how different this is. If you have not applied speed cranking to your fishing, you've been blowing it, period. Now this will work year round, okay? Speed cranking in general is a year round thing. But as we head into the end of fall and transition into winter, it begins to shine because other techniques are falling away. Giant fish are feeding more actively. They're feeding in places where we can predict them so you can actually target giant fish with the crankbait and catch those fish when nothing else will work or when very few things will work. So the concept again, crankbait rod, light line, very natural baits. You can't do this with every bait. And I'm gonna get into rods, reels, all that. You can't do it with every bait. We need baits that are very tight actioned, have very specific sound profiles, uh, and we'll dive deep and we'll move very, very quickly. Then we're going to use that stop and go retrieve to get those fish to react. Now there is an exception with some shallow baits as well, and we'll get to that. To kick this thing off, let's talk about Tim and I's bait. This is the Tactical DD75. Tim and I partnered with River to Sea a few years ago to build what we feel is the best speed cranking bait there is. We designed this bait to do a handful of things. We wanted to hit a certain dive depth easily because on a lot of fisheries around the country, uh, there are some fisheries where bass go super deep and you just can't crank them. They're just too deep. There are some fisheries where the fish are really shallow. We're gonna get to that. But the majority of lakes around the country have bass that spend the winter somewhere between 10 to 12 and 20 feet of water. Not the whole population, but there are always bass in that depth range. And we wanted a bait that could target that depth range very effectively with the right vibration, the right speed, the right sound, very specific sound coming out of this bait. And then we also wanted to be able to deflect off of cover really well, so we weren't constantly snagged up. Now, this concept is very simple. Again, just burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause. Sometimes we're doing that on bottom, banging through cover. Other times we're doing it up in the water column, suspended, never even touching bottom. But back to this specific bait, we built this bait with some very specific things in mind to try and design the best speed cranking bait there is. Now, uh, there are some things we do. We upgrade hooks after we dole the stock hooks. You know, there are a few things. I'm gonna show you how to tune some of these baits as well, but this bait was designed for this technique. It comes in a bunch of colors. You will notice that almost all of those colors are super natural. They're ghosty colors, extremely natural presentations, whether that's a shad, a minnow, a craw, very ghosty, very natural. We want to do this, it's very different than summertime cranking. Summertime cranking, bold, bright colors, uh, baits that are loud, wide vibration, or wide movement, heavy vibration, baits that will get fish to come from a distance. This is the opposite tight actions, fast moving, natural tones. That way the fish never get a good look at it. If you're throwing sexy shad or chartreuse blue, the fish will see the bait coming to them and they're less likely to have that feed response get them to chase. You want a bait that they're feeling show up, but they're not locking in on it. And then as it flies by, they just, boom, they go with it. So very natural colors are key. Now, we've designed that bait to fish really effectively between about 12 and 16 feet of water. You can get a little deeper, 
You can definitely fish it shallower. If you go to lighter line, we'll get it all the way down to about 18, 19 foot. Uh, but I like to fish that bait on 12 pound fluoro. That's my personal favorite. We'll get more into that. Now, let's call that bait the baseline, okay? That's the my standard. If I'm going speed cranking, that's where I start. But that's not the only bait in this category. There are some other baits that are excellent. Let's cover those. Mega Bass has two, okay? The first one is the Deep X 300. Slightly smaller than a Tactical DD. Slightly smaller bill, slightly smaller hooks. Everything is just a little bit downsized. Incredibly natural colors. In fact, these three are my favorites. If there's room in the video description, I'll name all three for you. But these baits are so effective. So the Deepex 300 is what I like to use if the fish seem to be sitting a little bit higher. Let's say anywhere from about eight foot out to about 13 feet. Because what we'll find is sometimes you just be going down a shoreline and the fish will just be out off the bank a little ways at a certain depth, right? But on a lot of lakes, we'll have big flats that go out and break off. And a lot of fish will pull out to those breaks and they'll move up and down them to feed. So even within a given day, I'll need more than one bait to get the job done. Because if the fish are moved up to the top, this bait is going to fish the top very effectively. But once they roll off that edge, maybe they've stopped feeding, conditions have changed, got a storm front starting to blow in like I do right now, as a matter of fact. You guys might notice it's getting cloudy, starting to get a little chop on the water. There's a front coming in. Those fish, if they move up or back off, we're going to adjust the bait accordingly. So I may have two, three, four, five different speed cranks tied on to go out for this technique. Again, I have the one I start with, that's a given, but I'll always branch out. That Deep X 300 is just a little more subtle, a little more natural. I can go to a little lighter line and it flat catches them. This is one of the most overlooked crankbaits on the entire market, flat out. I have caught multiple double digits on this bait. I'm talking actual bass, 10 pounds and up. This is an incredible technique for targeting giant fish. Now, the next bait, same deal. I've got the Tactical DD in the center. I wanna go shallower, I go to the Deep X 300. I wanna go deeper, I go to, again, Mega Bass, the Deep Six. The Deep Six, again, very natural tones. Whether I'm throwing something shad-like, minnow profile, craw profile, nothing too bold and obnoxious. The Deep Six, let me show you a difference here. Here's the Deep X 300, here's the Deep Six. It's just a larger bait, larger body, significantly larger bill, and also a larger hook. The Deep X 300 has a size four treble hook. The Tactical DD and the Deep Six both have size twos, okay? So you can get away with that 12, even 14 pound line if you want to with those bigger hooks. Where the Deep Six shines is when those fish are pulling deeper and they're really shutting down. Now I have found that I will, on a given day, I tend to get less bites on the Deep Six than I do on the Tactical DD or the Deep X 300. I'm not talking significant difference. I'm saying if I'm catching, you know, if I've had 15 bites between the other two baits, I might only pick up an extra four or five on this bait. But the difference is this bait is super subtle and will get a little deeper than the others very quickly. It has a very steep dive angle and although I don't get as many bites on it, again, I get giant bites on it. Again, actual double digit fish. I've caught one double digit on this bait and countless fish over seven pounds. It is a remarkable bait. And I'm talking about me, Tim has slayed giants on all these too. This isn't a random thing. We've done it all over the country, crushing giant bass using this method of crankbait fishing. So this is the bait that I pull out 
when those fish are back down, they're starting to shut down and I'm trying to get that bonus bite. Maybe get one more giant to go. If you're tournament fishing, you need that one more, a little farther out, little bit deeper, little more subtle, and boom, you get that last one that you needed. Now, I want to include one more bait today that I don't normally talk about. This is from Duo Realis. This is their G87 series. This is the 20A. This is a bait I don't turn to that often because in most of the places that I fish, the fish are sitting right in my depth range and I can, those three baits that I've already talked about will get them. But twice recently, I found myself on fisheries where the fish were just slightly deeper. They were fishing eight, or I was fishing from 18 to 25, 26 foot of water. That's just where the bass were. They had just positioned a little differently. Uh, there was a fall drawdown happening. The bass had just backed out a little further than normal. And I literally could not speed crank them. I couldn't get to them. This is the bait that solves that problem. There are plenty of big crankbaits, right? The Azuma, Z-Boss, um, the, the Strike King 10XD. I mean, baits that get super deep. But most of those baits are super aggressive. They're way too bold, way too loud. It's just way too harsh for the cold water winter thing. It's not to say you won't get a fish to eat them, but you're not targeting them effectively. This bait is specifically designed to fish in that same scenario. So notice how narrow and small the body of the bait is compared to this giant bill. This bait has an extremely steep dive angle, relatively small hook, still size two trebles, extremely tight actioned, very, it's not a, it's not a silent bait, but it is a subtle bait when it's running. The only thing about this bait is that it's designed to sort of roll around cover. So you're not gonna get that familiar like bump, 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 bump as it's digging bottom. It'll just sort of graze off of bottom. The bait will just wander around on you. But this bait will get down so fast and hold depth extremely well. So it fishes much like these other baits. It does not fish like a 10XD or other oversized crankbait. Those baits will have that rod fully loaded up. It's like everything you can do to burn them on a seven to one. This isn't like that at all. You can burn this bait super easy. There's almost no resistance and you can get just a little deeper than the other baits. Now, let's talk the complete other end of the spectrum because there are some fisheries where bass just plain stay shallow. If you live on one of them, you know what I'm talking about. This Tennessee River is an example. There are fish out deep all winter, but there are fish on the bank all winter it's amazing they just they just like the shallow water speed cranking can work shallow too but i have found personally my best results have always 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 in that cold water if i'm fishing shallow it's flat sided crankbaits i grabbed three just three baits that i have crushed them on uh, that I think could be of benefit to you. If you're one of those guys where shallow water is still a player in the winter time. From Rapala in the OG series, that's Ott's Garage series, OG, Ott's Garage. That's the Slim Six. That is a super effective bait. It's a balsa bait, tight actioned bait, works extremely well in cold water. I actually really like the stock hardware on it too, which is a great bonus because I change almost all of my hardware. Uh, and again, I'm gonna get to that. There are some fine details we haven't covered yet. Hang in there with me. But the first one is that OG Slim. The next one from Spro, this little guy right here has just, I mean, it's just crushed it for years, for years. Uh, the Spro Little John. Now the Little John comes in two versions, okay? There's a rattling and a, it's not a silent, this is it. It's not silent, but it's like a, it's like a soft ball in there. So it's like this low thud. There's not a traditional rattle sound. It's just a low thudding. Duh, 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 duh. It's just enough. So I'm not throwing that super loud rattling bait. I want to be very subtle. 
but that Spro Little John is a killer. And then the last one in the Shimano Macbeth line is their flat bait. What I like about this one, it is the most subtle of the bunch, smallest body, but it's got a weight transfer system in it. So even though it's small, you can cast it really effectively. A lot of flat sides, it's almost impossible to actually fish with them. Like I throw a lot of them on bait finesse gear just because that's what it takes to consistently cast the things. This bait is not that way. In fact, all three of these are not that way. All three of these are baits that can be fished really, really effectively covering water and it's not driving you crazy like a lot of traditional balsas and flat sides. But all three of those flat sided baits, they have a, a much tighter action. It's similar to these deep cranks. Tighter action, subtle movement, but then again, we are burning them. Now back to burning them. I'm literally talking about at a minimum, a seven to one reel. And most of the time I'm using an eight to one reel. If you're checking the video descriptions on our video, like Shimo, I throw a lot of Shimano reels, right? On Shimano, this says 150 HG. HG stands for high gear, that's seven to one. If it's an XG, that's extra high gear. That's the eight to one. Either a seven to one or an eight to one. You want to be burning these baits. I don't care how cold your water is. I don't care where you live in the country. You just, have to trust me on this long enough to try it for yourself. The fish will show you that this is no joke. There is nothing else like it that draws that feed response. But when I've showed you some baits here, a lot of people over the years, as we've been talking about this, they're like, hey man, I went to my lake and it didn't work. I threw a DD-22. I threw this bait, I threw that bait. There are a lot of great crankbaits out there designed for fishing the normal crankbait season, warmer water. Don't try to speed crank with them. That's not what they're for. They, when those baits were designed, no one even knew you could do this. The concept didn't even exist. It was stumbled upon by accident. If you're going to speed crank, these are literally the only baits that I speed crank in cold water with. There are no other. You guys saw when I start stacking up square bell boxes, right? We are not messing around. If there's a bait on the market, we're trying it. When it comes to speed cranking, it's this narrow. There are very few baits that I'm doing it with. Very few baits. Uh, it works. If you use the right baits and you burn it, don't slow down, burn it. It will work for you. Uh, now, as far as where I'm throwing these things, rock is ideal for two reasons. One, your baits will deflect. So if your baits running along and it hits a rock, it'll pop off. And when you feel that, if you pause, a lot of times that's when fish will lash out and strike that bait. But more than that, rock is ideal because in winter time, when the water gets really cold, bass like to pull to rock, chunk rock. If you've got any on your lake, you can bet that's one of the places that your bass are piling up. I'm gonna be doing this on rocky corners, humps out in the open water. If there's rock on that, you know, actual rock piles. Um, I'll do it right down the sides of docks sometimes, like burning it down the docks, pulling the fish out off the pilings. Because again, we don't have to make bottom contact. I like to make bottom contact. I like to bang into things, deflect, pause, and get a reaction. But because we're going so fast and stopping, burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause. Because we're doing that, it will get the feed response regardless. So if there's an island top in 20 foot and I'm throwing this on a line that'll only let me get down to 16, as long as I'm burning and stopping, burning and stopping, if those fish are in a feed mode at all, those last few feet, they'll cover that to get the bait. It's only when they're completely locked down and don't want to feed that I have to make sure I've got a bait in my hand that will physically reach them right there in their face and pass them. The worse the conditions, you know, post frontal, heavy winds, that cold sets in, whatever it may be, the worse the conditions, the less the fish want to feed, the more I need the bait to come right past the bass to get them to go after it. But if it's a good day, either you got a front coming in, 
uh, or it's a warming trend, uh, you know, you don't have that harsh north wind blowing. If it's a good day and those fish want to feed anyway, this just takes it to a next level and they'll come farther to get it. And you can be up over their head. You can miss them by two, three, four, five feet and they'll still shoot up off the bottom to catch it. If fish are suspended, I don't worry about it at all. I mean, I can't tell you how many fish I've cranked on like outside points in the fall. When water's dropping, they're pulling the lake to winter pool those fish will back out and suspend. And they might be 15 feet down over 120 feet of water. And I run that crankbait through there, pause, burn, pause, burn, pause, and boom! Those suspended fish will absolutely run the bait down. So I'm talking 80 feet above the bottom and they'll still run out and grab it. There is no end to the ways that you can do this. Now again, as far as gear goes, you can go with much lighter gear than you would normally crank on. My standard is straight 12 pound fluoro, okay? This is, this is my favorite combo for speed cranking. This is the G Loomis 906C CBR, the 906 crankbait rod. Uh, it's just an incredibly effective rod. It's got a great balance of power with a super soft tip that just keeps fish pinned. Uh, I really, really like this combo. Through the years, I've thrown it with all sorts of different reels. Lately, I've been using the Corrado 150. Uh, it's just a fantastic casting reel, and it won't break the bank like some reels will. I've used a Bantam a ton. Uh, it's just lately, and I have no complaints. The Bantam is unbelievable. Like a, a 906 with a Bantam on it is freakish. But I've been trying to run through some of the mid-priced reels and find a really good option uh, to recommend to people. And that's how I ended up on this Corrado 150. Now, that's my main gig. That's my main rod, but I use a lot of different rods. We're constantly looking. Uh, on the budget end, I've been really happy with this Tatula seven footer lately. It's more of like an all around. You can throw deep cranks on it. You can also throw the shallow stuff on it. Had that paired up to a Fuego. Again, 12 pound fluoro. That's that hidden fluoro I keep talking about in videos. It's that green fluorocarbon. I don't know why that stuff lasts like it does. I just, I spool up less often when I'm using that line right there. Uh, I'm just very impressed with it and continuing to branch into different techniques with it to see where it shines. Now, specifically the shallow stuff, the flat sides. My favorite rod over the last year has been the Mega Bass Levante, which is their most affordable line. It's not their high end stuff. The Levante flat side special is a phenomenal square bill, shallow type rod. Uh, I used this this entire end of winter into spring last year. That was the only rod I was square billing on and it was just so good. I just never lose fish on it. It's so good. And then same, this compared up to a 13 fishing concept C2, which for the price is an incredibly lightweight reel. The lightest reel for its price. It's phenomenal. And again, 12 pound straight fluoro. Now I keep saying fluorocarbon. Here's the deal. There is an exception. I'm cranking with fluoro out of convenience. It's just really easy. I can get great distance. I can get great depth. It's very consistent. If I nick my lineup, I pull a few feet off, cut it off, retie, no big deal. So I use it out of convenience. But if you get on this bite and you start smashing fish, I want you to do yourself a favor, get a second reel, spool it up with 20 pound braid, then tie a 12 pound leader on it and try that. The reason why is that when I'm burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause. When you do that on fluoro, the fluoro itself has some stretch. So when you're stopping and going, the pause is not as sharp as it could be, okay? Because the line has some stretch. When you stop, there's still gonna be a little bit of forward movement. Now, one of the things I do to counter that, if you actually watch me speed crank, you'll notice that when I pause, I kind of stick my arms out a little, just a little. I try to throw as much slack to the bait as I can to get it to fully stop right away. That's just a little trick I use. 
But if you're on this bite and it's happening, switch to braid. It's not as convenient. You will have to tie more leaders. Uh, once in a while, you're gonna backlash it. Light braid can give you some headaches, especially when your hands are cold and you're trying to thumb it in the middle of winter. I get it. But the bait will burn, stop. Burn, stop, dead stop. When you stop, it'll stop. When you go, it'll go. And it can take the reaction bite to a whole different level. It really can. It can take it one more giant leap forward. Those fish get even more responsive, even more aggressive. And that's when I see those fish. I want to think about what I'm saying and make sure it's true. I don't think I've ever got a fish to come into a figure eight boat side that wasn't chasing on braid. I think that the harsh stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. Those fish get so crazy that even if they run out of room, they come all the way to the boat with it. And I'm there whipping that bait around on the side of the boat, trying to get them to commit to it. The fluoro works great. It's convenient. 90 plus percent of the time, that's what I'm using because it's just simple. But if I'm really on that bite, I do still to this day, take the time to switch over to braid to try and see if I can take it even farther. Now, two more things for you. One is tuning, two is hooks. This is super important. I don't care how good your crankbait is. If you are actually doing what I'm telling you and you are burning it on an eight to one reel, you will have to tune it at some point, period. I don't care what bait, what brand, do not care. If you're banging into bottom, hitting rocks with that kind of speed, you're gonna knock the bait out of tune. Fixing that is so simple. If you're throwing your crankbait and you notice your line tracks one way or the other, just a little bit, I mean, sometimes if a bait's really out of tune, it'll shoot off to the side or it'll come up and it won't wanna go down. We can fix that too, but I'm talking subtle. That bait just, if I throw it out and reel it in a straight line, it goes a couple of feet to the left, let's say. So it's just barely running to the left, okay? If it's trying to do that, what we do to correct that is we take a pair of needle nose. Smaller needle nose, the better, because you don't want to over adjust. On the nose of my bait, I've got my split ring, and then I've got the line tie behind that split ring. Flip the split ring out of the way. I grab the actual line tie of the bait. If my bait is veering off to this side, I pull the line tie the other way. If the bait's veering off to this side, I pull the line tie this way. So you're going to bend it opposite of the way that it's tracking. Again, it can only be off a tiny bit, but if your bait's just barely tracking left, that might cost you a foot or a foot and a half of dive depth, which might be the difference between getting fish to commit and being just too far above their heads and them not reacting to it. So I always want them tracking dead true. So pull that split ring out of the way, grab the actual line tie of the bait, and then just ever so slightly bend it whichever direction you need to. Slightly is key. Slight bend. Cast it again. If nothing happened, a little bit harder. Throw it again. If you go too far, it'll start tracking the other direction. Bend it back. You're not gonna ruin your bait. You can sit there and make 15 adjustments. You're gonna be fine. But adjust that bait until it runs dead true every single time. Now your bait's dialed in. You might find 40 casts later and a couple big fish later, all of a sudden it's messed up again. Grab your pliers, little adjustment, back to it. Take the time to keep your baits tracking true. The nastier the bottom, the more rocky, the more often you'll have to do it. Usually, I tune a bait one time, and you won't even notice. If you're throwing it on a regular, like, 5 to 1 or 6 to 1, you're like, my bait's perfect. You speed up to an 8 to 1, and you're like, nope, it's off just a little. It will show you the flaw, and you just take it, adjust it, and you're usually good for at least the day, if not a few days. But, again, you can hit a rock just wrong. It'll bend that line tie just a little, That'll throw that bait. That bait's not done. Grab those pliers, fix it. Last but not least, I talked about upgrading hooks. I mentioned it. Three main hooks that I upgrade to, and I have been changing. Uh, I'm constantly looking 
for my best solution. Let's talk about our crank first. The Tactical DD specifically. This is an owner ST35. Notice it's not a normal treble. Normally a treble hook, the points are all evenly spaced like this Gamakatsu. This one is not. There's a flat side. The only thing about our Tactical DD is it's sort of an in-between sized bait. So it took us a while to find the perfect replacement hook. This is the perfect replacement hook. I used to throw an even larger size. Now I use the size two. I've been doing that for a while now and I'm so happy. In fact, that's what's on that one. Those are size twos. Now again, there's a flat side to this hook. So there's a right way and a wrong way to put them on. When I install my hook, I want the flat side laying on the belly. That way all three points are out and ready to hook that fish. And then on my back hook, I want flat side down, point sticking up. Let me turn it so you can see that. Point up. So on the back hook, flat side down. On the front hook, flat side up. That is a fantastic hook for any crankbait, but specifically our bait, that is the best hook I've ever found for replacements on my bait. There's another one right there. And actually, I can't take any credit for it. Tim figured out that that hook is a perfect pairing to that bait. And he told me to try it, I tried it, and he was right, it is money. I take no credit for that one whatsoever. Two more, uh, on the Mega Bass, on the Deep Six, or on that Duo Realis. The Duo comes with heavy hardware on it already, but if you wanna make it a little more subtle, and then on the Mega Bass, if you wanna just hook up a little better, see the Mega Bass comes with straight point hooks, straight up and down points. I'm gonna switch to a Gamakatsu EWG. Again, size two on both of these baits. The difference is that the points are tipped in. On some baits, you want straight points. On other baits, you want points tipped in. The difference is how the bass eats the bait. A jerk bait is a perfect example of a bait that has to have straight points because bass tend to come up and slap it. If your points are tipped in, you will tangibly hook less fish. Speed cranking, almost all of the bites come right when you pause. So you stop and they fully engulf the bait. They eat it whole. As a result, you can get away with tipped in points. The benefit of a tipped in point is that your, your landing ratio goes through the roof. So a hookup ratio, the number of times a fish hits a bait and gets hooked will be higher with a straight point. But the number of fish that will get off, come up, jump, and get away is also higher with a straight point. So if you can get away with a tipped in point, you will land more of the fish that you hook. So speed cranking, all of my hook points are tipped in. That owner with the flat side, they're tipped in. That Gamakatsu EWG, tipped in. And then one more that I have been playing with, this is a BKK hook. And again, in the video description, I'll link the exact hook. This thing is nasty. Short shanked, huge gap on those hook points with a great curved point on it and super strong. This is a very subtle hook. I'm able to throw that one in some of these places. It's a great replacement on that guy right there on the OG. The smaller size is great for all of these smaller cranks. And then again, the bigger sizes will work great. Where's the Deep X 300? Work great there as well. But that, if you know you're gonna be around big ones, like there's a risk, I say a risk, a reward, that a six, seven, eight, 10, 12 pounder might eat that thing, going with that strong hook, heavy wire, is a really, really good option to make sure that if you hook that fish, you're gonna get them in the boat. You're not gonna get bent out. They're not gonna jump and come off. Although the colder the water, the less likely they'll jump. So in winter time, your odds are already going up because the fish are staying down. They're bulldogging more than jumping. But even so, tipped in points make a huge 
huge difference. So in the video description, uh, I will link the baits. I'll link our favorite colors in each bait, the exact rods, reels, gear, the hooks, the split rings, all that stuff for you. But guys, speed cranking is the real deal. This fall, we have covered some monster techniques. We've done some full-blown seminars for you on all the really, really important techniques, but we wanted to wrap it up with this one because this is one of those techniques that will work from now all the way into spring. And it truly, it's up there with a giant swim bait for catching PBs. It's crazy how many people catch the biggest bass of their life speed cranking, and you can too. This will work all the way through winter. Ignore everything you know about bass fishing and just go try it regardless of your water temperature and you will be shocked at what can happen. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.